Hello and welcome to Mary Hill News. I'm Rosie Parsons and I'm Sean McMain. Due to the amount of traffic and slow process of legging, the Harecastle Tunnel was becoming a major bottleneck on the, the canal. It was decided to commission a second tunnel to be built by Thomas Telford. Due to advances in engineering, it took just two years to build and was completed in 1827. It had a towpath so the horses could pull the boats through the tunnel. After its construction, it was used in conjunction with the Brindley Tunnel. In each tunnel, it was taking traffic in opposite directions. Now to Verity and Drusha at the scene. Thank you. We're live at the opening of the Telford Tunnel. Speaking to us now is the de designer of the tunnel, Mr Thomas Telford. I'm pleased to see the bargees, the boatmen, have been very complimentary so far. So yes, I thought I'd better pop along and see how it's going. Yeah. What date did it open? Uh, 1824, is, uh, as far as I remember. I'm so busy these days. <laughs> How long did it take? Uh, well, it's only taken two years since I first produced the plan, because yeah. uh, we've had uh, you know, a lot of workmen busy on it. How many men did it take to build? Oh, now you see, you'd have to ask Mr Pritchard that, uh, because I've been off doing other things. Uh, and he's the man who I left in charge, but uh, I su suspect it's probably, it's probably several hundred. Was there any unfortunate deaths? Oh, well, yes. I don't know how many because, uh, well, we've got, you know, we, there are these things, they happen, uh, and uh, the men have to take their own chances uh, with these things. It's dangerous work, yes, but uh, I haven't been told how many men there were killed because, well, just, uh, you know, I've, uh, once my job's done, it's how people build it, so it's the main thing. <laughs> what type of materials were transported? Oh, along the canal now, oh yes, well, it's vital to the success of Great Britain. Uh, we bring all the materials for pottery, of course, and then take the finished pottery away. Uh, we take wheat, uh, uh, corn to go to the mills that the people need for bread. Uh, we bring slate, we bring stone, we need lime uh, to produce various uh, things, to, to go into the factories, the iron, iron families for a start. And you also need lime for, for putting on the, on the farms. You also need manure, which is not a, a subject which I like going into very, mu very much. But of course, uh, to remove horse manure from towns uh, and take it out to the fields where it can go to uh, compost the fields and produce more crops is, uh, is of course a great value to the country. Where does it transport to and from? Well, on the on this on this canal, uh, I mean, we, we go all the way across the entire country, so that uh, material can go from this area uh, or from Liverpool comes that it can go all the way across to Hull and then be exported to the continent to Sweden, to Germany, to France, and if it goes the other way, it goes across to Liverpool, uh, goes down to London, the south coast, goes down to France, goes down to Spain, goes across to Ireland and then to the United States. Uh, Wedgwood is uh, importing, exporting a great deal of pottery to the United States, yeah. for example. So, so this is is a vital worldwide resource, yeah. and we should be very pleased that we've uh, helped it out mm -hmm. in a small way. Thank you, Verity and Jerusha. Good night from Mary Hill News. Good morning and welcome to MHTV News and I'm Daniel Rowanton. Today we will be looking at Brimley and Telford Tunnels. Now we are going live to Matthew Shearman outside Brimley Tunnel in Kitchburn. Over to you Matt. Thanks Dan. I'm here outside the James Brimley Tunnel to investigate how boats used to get through this two mile tunnel. As you can see from this old footage, boat owners used to hire beggars to leg their boats through the, through the tunnel. Now back into the studio with Dan. Thanks Matt, it must have took them ages to get through the tunnel. Earlier this morning we interviewed a local historian, Mr Philbert Lees. Let's watch what he said. How long did it take 
to get through from a, when you when you're like how many oh. people that, that's interesting. That, that, I would think it would probably take about one and a half hours. There is an account from around about 1914, something like that, of one of the leggers, who said it was about one and a half hours, and usually you felt as if you'd been, you were just as soaked with sweat as if you'd been dragged through the canal. Where the leggers, the owners of the leggers, are trained in Oh, that's a good question, that one is. Now, I would think originally that the, the, they wouldn't be the owners of the boats, they would just hire the boats, they were just paid by the job sort of thing. It's only later that they got, some of them got wealthy enough to own their own boats. But originally I should think that most of the boats were laid through by the boatmen. But eventually, round Kidsgrove, we got a little class of men, and I've no idea how many there were, who were called leggers, who waited for the boats to come through to give the, the boatmen a bit of a time off. You know, they, they could go to the pub or whatever and say, right, I'll see you, see you chatting with the other end. Uh, and so there got to be some leggers. Uh, it's very difficult to say when they started. Thank you for watching MHTV. Goodbye. Welcome to Mary Hill News. Today is the 30th of September 1772 and we are mourning the death of local pioneer James Brindley. Yes, it is a sad day here in Kesbo. James Brindley built over 250 miles of canals here in England and by doing so revolutionised <laughs> trade transport today. We're going over to our reporter, Oliver. Hello, I'm here in the Hentro. It's such a tragedy. The man that has brought so much to society is no longer with us. I'm sure I'm going to the great loss. Yeah, I was close to James and I hope to fulfill his wishes and finish off the tunnel. May he rest in peace. James Bindley lies amongst these rocks. He made canals, bridges and locks to convey water. He made tunnels for barges, boats and air vessels. He erected several banks, mills, pumps, machines with wheels and cranks. He was famous to invent engines, calculated for working mines. He knew water, its weight and strength. Turned brooks, made soughs to a great length. While he used the miner's blast, he'd stopped currents from running too fast. There ne'er was paid such attention as he did to navigation. But while busy with pit or well, his spirits sunk below level. And when too late, his doctor found, water sent him to the ground. Uh, thank you, Oliver, and thank you, Mr. Henshaw, for joining us on this sad day. That's all from me. Thank you for watching. Good night. Hello, I'm Sophie Mark. And I'm Katie Haynes. Today's story is about a young girl who was murdered at two places in the Hare Castle Tunnel. Now we're going live to Liam, where the headless woman was last seen. Hello, this is Liam here at Hare Castle Tunnel. I'm here to get an exclusive interview with the headless woman. And I think she's coming. It's the headless woman. What is your real name, headless lady? Christina Collins. The, yes, her name is Christina Collins. Christina Collins. What's her name? What year did she die? Uh, 1839. How did she die? How did she die? Uh, well, of course. The problem is that, that the only people who were there, the only witnesses, were the people who were eventually uh, charged with her murder. But I'm not sure whether it wasn't strangulation. And how would you like to revenge the people who did this to you? Stabbing and more stabbing. Okay, well, then back to the studio. Okay. That was Mary Hill News. Now for the weather.